Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Magical Memories with Maddie podcast. For today's episode, I uh, wanted to talk about Disney World's DAS Pass. I'm not really going to cover Disneyland's version because I've never used it before, but hopefully I will some at some point in the future. My mom qualifies for the DAS Pass, so that is how I am an expert in this. Uh, this is a very beneficial thing to someone who can qualify, but do not try to claim that you have a disability when you don't. Please only use this pass if you qualify, if you have some sort of disability, because you will get banned from Disney World if they find out that you are lying. So we don't want to do that. We don't want to ruin it for the other people who really do need this pass. Um, it stand, DAS stands for Disability Access Service, and it can be used for the person, the owner of the pass, and five guests, so six people total. So if you have a bigger party than that, it's going to be a little bit more complicated. Um, I don't really know the what they do there. Uh, this pass is a free service that allows the user and its guests to attend attractions in the theme park at a shorter wait, which basically means going through the lightning lane or if they don't have that option booked for you. It, it's You can use this pass at every attraction. They will probably take you in through the exit or something. Um, once you have activated your pass, you do a little call thing or you message or whatever, and you can select two attractions per day. So not necessarily per park. You could probably do two different parks because you can park up whenever you want now. But you have to do two, two attractions per day, and there's a list of those that are not the same as the full extent of what you can book with your DAS pass. That's basically most of the rides, just not the newer, more popular ones. Um, but you can find that list online. The pass does not include the attractions listed under virtual queue because you are in a virtual queue for that, such as Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind and Tron Light Cycle Run. And the same goes for specialty events. You cannot use your DAS pass for those. So after hours events, um, Jollywood Nights, Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party, Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party, those do not allow you to use your dis DAS pass. I know this because we had the DAS pass and we were not ever able to use it at Jollywood Nights, but we never really waited that long in line because the beauty of after hour events is that the waits are generally shorter. So if you have too many people in your party and you might need that pass, maybe you should try out some after hours events. They are all back at Disney World for three of the four parks, I believe. So maybe you should check that out. So, since I just went, I know every attraction that is included with the DAS Pass, and I'm going to read them to you. So, we're going to start with Animal Kingdom. The Animation Experience at Conservation Station. Avatar Flight of Passage. Dinosaur. Expedition Everest. Festival of the Lion King. Finding Nemo the Big Blue and Beyond. It's Tough to Be a Bug. Kilimanjaro Safari. Meet Favorite Disney Pals at Adventurer's Outpost and Navi River Journey. Before I continue on, I actually did want to say something else I forgot to mention. So when it comes to using this pass, this is not like Genie Plus, but it is like Genie Plus, where, um, first of all, Genie Plus you can book for at seven, starting at 7 a.m. before you even enter the parks for the day, whereas DAS, you have to wait until you scan into the park, and the same goes for park hopping. You can't make your DAS pass for the park you're park hopping to until you get into that park, which can be quite problematic if you're trying to do a lot of things in one day. So you kind of want to plan your park hopping around uh, what you're planning on doing. So you're there well before you need to be, depending on what the time is. Um, so you, cause you have to find stuff to do in the meantime. Um, and if you're, you know, using this pass because you can't stand in long lines, that can become quite problematic if it's very crowded and very busy. And what are you going to do to kill time if not ride rides? Especially in Magic Kingdom. Uh, now, the other parks don't have as many attractions. There's other things you can do. Um, some things just don't really have that high of a weight. Some things are just shows that you don't necessarily maybe need them for, but they're useful. Um, stuff like that. Uh, also, the DAS Pass, it is not like Genie Plus where you only have an hour return time window. You have any time you can return after. 
So this uh, same goes for your pre-select ones. If you have pre-select ones and you were kind of going in a certain pattern, like let's say you were going to Epcot and you had a Soren one for like later in the day pre-booked, you don't have to ride it until like whenever you get to Soren. If you're like in the World Showcase and you're not in the mood to like go over there for when it starts, you're completely free to go whenever you want. Same with test track. I think we had a test track one. And but we got it when we were in the World Showcase. But yeah, you can return anytime after. So you kind of want to be a little strategic with it when booking these. And I, you definitely need to be strategic with Genie Plus. But I mean, that's just a whole different video that I think I already covered. So anyway, yeah. So it's return anytime after. So if you are like eating lunch or you're eating dinner or you aren't at that country yet in the World Showcase... It's fine. As long as you get there, you just can't book your next one until after you scan in. That's the thing. But other than Magic Kingdom, most of these parks don't have that many attractions that you need to really, that you can really do or really need it for. So it's totally cool. Uh, we literally, for other than Magic Kingdom, the other three parks, we're done with like all of the rides by like 12 o'clock each day on our last trip. And we were at Epcot on the busiest Saturday ever. But we did still do uh, Frozen a little bit later than that. But that's because we couldn't get it earlier than that. But we probably booked it around 12. And we honestly don't ever normally do Frozen. We just did it because we could. All right. The attractions in Magic Kingdom are Astro Orbiter, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin, Dumbo the Flying Elephant, Enchanted Tales with Belle, Haunted Mansion, It's a Small World, Jungle Cruise, Mad Tea Party, The Magic Carpets of Aladdin, the Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, Meet Ariel at her grotto, Meet Cinderella and a Visiting Princess at Princess Fairytale Hall, Meet Mickey at Town Square Theater, Meet Princess Tiana and a Visiting Princess at Princess Fairytale Hall, Mickey's Fill Our Magic, Monsters Inc. Laugh Floor, Peter Pan's Flight, Pirates of the Caribbean, Caribbean, Pirates of the Caribbean, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, Space Mountain, Tomorrowland Speedway, Tomorrowland Transit Authority People Mover, and Under the Sea Journey of the Little Mermaid. Editing Maddie here to pop in. Um, sorry about the audio on this. I clearly was holding that microphone too close to me, and I just, I don't like wearing it on my shirt because I feel like it doesn't work as good, but I feel like the audio sounds better when I wear it on my shirt. Um, other than when I do stuff, that's the only good thing about holding it. So I'm going to try better about holding it better next time. So I'm sorry, and I apologize, but I'm not going to refill on this, so. Like I said, lots of attractions. But the fun thing I do want to note there is that Seven Dwarfs Mine Train is included. That is an individual lightning lane if you do not qualify for DAS. So that is one of the things that I loved saying is that there are individual lightning lane attractions in these, just not ones that are on virtual queue. Um, they they got to get you money somewhere if you have DAS pass because you don't have to pay for this. <laughs> they know how to get you everywhere. This is going to be the shortest episode ever. Okay. Uh, Epcot. Frozen Ever After. Journey into Imagination with Figment. Living with the Land. Mission Space. Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. The Seas with Nemo and Friends, Soarin' Around the World, Spaceship Earth, and Turtle Talk with Crush. See, not that many attractions. Now, like I said, Guardians of the Galaxy is also an attraction here. It is currently on virtual queue. I don't know if it will go to DAS Pass once it is in a standby line, but if Remy's, Remy Ratatouille Adventure did, I would assume it would too. So that's really exciting for us in the future because we love Cosmic Rewind. And so if we could just keep rewriting Cosmic Rewind, because that's the other beauty of DAS Pass that I probably haven't mentioned yet, is that you, it's not like Genie Plus where you can only book the ride once with Genie Plus. You can book it as many times as you want, which is awesome. I appreciate that because we did do a couple of these twice just because we could. All right, Hollywood Studios has the longest list of these other three besides Magic. It's kind of surprising, honestly. Alien Swirling Saucers, Beauty and the Beast Live on Stage, Disney Junior Play and Dance, For the First Time in Forever, A Frozen Sing-Along Celebration, Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Adventure, Meet Disney Stars at Red Carpet Dreams, Meet Olaf at Celebrity Spotlight, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, A Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run, Muppet Vision 3D, Slinky Dog Dash, Star Tours, 
Star Wars Rise of the, the Resistance, another individual lightning lane. Uh, Toy Story Mania and Tower of Terror. Star Wars Rise of Resistance and Slinky Dog are the ones I recommend doing first, unless you really want to ride Slinky at night and save it for last, because you can get it all day. Uh, but if you have Genie Plus, yeah, those are first, for sure. Um, uh, my biggest tip I could ever give people, if they want to do both of those, both Lightning Lanes for those, like get Genie Plus and whatever, have one person buy the Lightning Lane and have another person book Genie Plus, because you're never going to do good enough at booking those from the same device. Like, I... You can't do both of those on the same device. You have to use another one. It's just easier. It's faster. It's more within that second that you can get it. Um, so it's really crucial and um, important. And so the same goes for Virtual Queue and booking Genie Plus Lightning Lanes. You One person do Virtual Queue, one person does something else. Like, you cannot both do... You can't do both at the same time on the same device. You just can't. Also, the Genie Pluses go really quickly. You want to get an uh, early one as possible. Unless you have the standby skipper. But anyway, back to the AS Pass. Um, so yeah, um, you honestly don't need to book most of the shows. Uh, in fact, we walked up to Beauty and the Beast after it already started and they let us in. And we found a seat, like kind of in the sun, but I mean, we found a seat. And um, because you can return anytime after... Those are kind of tricky because you can't really return anytime after with a lightning lane for a show, I would say. I feel like you have to make it for that show, for that time, because then you have to wait till the next show. And then you're just standing there, and that defeats the point. But the lightning lane usually is a comeback time for a good 20, 30 minutes before the show. So, you know, whatever. So you have a little bit of time, I guess. Uh, and the same goes for the animation experience. Your lightning lane is for before it even starts. Uh, it's weird. Um, the characters are a fun option. If you were going to meet characters, that's probably something I would definitely use it for. Um, I would ride the rides first, and then I would do characters. Same goes for Chini Plus. Because uh, why waste your lightning lanes in the morning for characters and then not have any in the afternoon. I'd rather, much rather wait meet characters in the afternoon after I've ridden everything in the park. Especially at Hollywood and Ep well, Epcot doesn't have any. And Animal Kingdom. Those, I think, have character. Yeah, there's the Disney Pals and Adventures Outpost. And then there's a few at Hollywood Studios. Quite a few. There's Olaf making minis. It's fun. Um, yeah. The thing about DAS Pass that no one tells you, though, is how big these parks really are can really contribute into when you should book these rides. Uh, because it's a return anytime after, I always say, even if you aren't near the thing you're going to do next, if, you like, if you're in Epcot and you know you're going to start in Mexico and you know you're done with all the attractions in the front, go ahead and book Frozen Ever After. Even if it's two hours away, because... It might take you that long to get there. You never know. But also, then you already have it for when you get there. If it does take you that long, it might only be an hour. Um, the uh, return time for the AS Pass, I don't think I mentioned, is actually whatever the wait time is. So if there is a 120-minute wait for Flight of Passage, you get your return time for your Lightning Lane in 120 minutes. Sometimes it's earlier. It's usually not. It's usually whatever that return that whatever that wait time is so uh that's another reason why i say do the higher weight ones first because then you breeze right through everything else also some of these don't have high weights star tours i never saw star tours at higher than a five minute wait when i was in hollywood studios unless like rise of resistance was down that's also when Mill millennium falcon gets a higher weight too because you that one's usually a low weight too uh, if Millennium Falcon has a high weight, you guys, I bet you Rise of Resistance is down and everybody ran over there because they didn't want to leave Star Wars in case it went back up. Bet. I could promise you that's exactly what happened. <laughs> nobody, nobody rides Millennium Falcon unless they have to. <laughs> or they just like it. I love Millennium Falcon, though. It's a completely underrated attraction. But yeah, like I said, not all of these need uh, DAS passes, but how about I give you guys a list of the ones that I think you should book the ES passes for? Flight of Passage. 
that's an individual lightning lane too. Um, that better be the first thing that you book because nothing else is worth it. Also, it's usually going to have a high wait time regardless of when you get in and when you book it. So the earlier you book it, the better, because then you can go find something with a shorter wait to do in the meantime, like maybe the other Pandora ride, <laughs> which is what we did. And then we had breakfast and then we read Flight of Passage because that's how high the wait was. Um, and that's when our return time was. I could care less about Dinosaur. Everest is fun, but sometimes Everest doesn't have a high wait. So it depends on if it has a high wait. Um, the Safari ride's always a great option. The Safari gets a really long line. Um, if, if you really want to ride Navi River Journey, you can book it. I would save it for last because it's really not, honestly, you could, like I said, if you start with Pandora and you just booked, you know, Flight of Passage, you could go to Navi River Journey while you wait. It's probably a 15 minute wait. Easy peasy. Walk on. All right. Let's do Magic Kingdom. Big Thunder Mountain. It's better in Disneyland, but Big Thunder Mountain. <laughs> I want to do a video talking about what's better in Disneyland. And I might actually do that. You guys want that? Let me know. Nobody watches this podcast. Who am I getting? Um, the characters, like the princesses here, they can get some 40 minute waits there. That'd be really fun to like walk right in. Um, there's not much here. <laughs> Peter Pan's flight, just because it's ridiculously high weight all the time for no reason. Um, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. Duh, that's everybody's favor, and the fact that then you won't have to start with Seven Dwarfs Mine Train because you can book it. Also, Space Mountain. My recommendation for you, if you get the DAS Pass, don't ride either of those in the morning. Go ride Peter Pan's Flight, and then book those, one after the other. Seven Dwarfs first, and then Space Mountain. Because Seven Dwarfs is not that far from Tomorrowland, firstly. Secondly, Peter Pan's flight is not going to have that many people running it first thing in the morning because everybody goes to those two. You know I'm right. Um, I don't know why anybody would ever need to book the people mover, but I love the option because I 100% with the fact that DAS allows you to re-ride rides, I would ride it 20 times in a row. Loop it. Let's go. I love the people mover. Um, all right, Epcot. Frozen's actually, like, one of the most fun rides I've ever been on, and I'm mad that we never ride it, because it's so fun. If I ever went back to Epcot and for some reason got Ginny Plus, I would totally book Frozen. Um, Ratatouille, obviously. Living with the land if it gets high, y'all. I was not about to wait in that Living with the Land line. It was busy in Epcot that day, but I wasn't going to make them ride it, too, so I didn't ride at all. Um, cause I was going to ride it while we were in the land pavilion, but I was like, yeah, no, I'm not waiting in that line for that. It's not worth it. Um, and so on. So, so Epcot's not really a park you need Genie Plus for unless it's that busy because there's not that many rides like Test Track. I don't even see, oh, Test Track's not even on here, but it is supposed to be. So let me add that. Test Track kept going down during our trip. So when I screen recorded this, it must've been down because it's not on here. But it should be. Uh, Test Track's the only other one I would book. Um, Test Track has single rider line. Soren gets a lower weight sometimes later in the day. Or you can jump in line before uh, fireworks and just randomly catch fireworks. And then you could start with Ratatouille if you ride it on the Skyliner. Um, or it really just sometimes doesn't have high weight like later in the evening. So it's really not that bad. Frozen's really the only one if you're going to ride it. Um, honestly, you can skip it. All right, Hollywood Studios. Um, let's see. Falcon if it's busy, but only if it's busy because it has a single rider line. Please use the single rider lines, guys. But also, if you do single rider, you don't get pilot. So if you want pilot, book it for sure. Um, Slinky Dog Dash, which we never did. I'm so sad. Because we booked it and they didn't want to go walk over there, I guess, before they left. And I can't do it without the person who has DS Pass. So, I was sad. Rise of Resistance. Especially if it's up. Because that sucker goes down all the time. And I'll give you a lightning lane if it does go down. So. Toy Story Mania, of course. Tower of Terror. Duh. If you use Genie Plus or DS Pass, anything... 
to book star tours. It better have like a 50, 50, no, a 40 minute wait because there is no reason for star tours to need one of these. It is always a walk on. Always. And so if it's a five minute wait and you booked a Genie Plus, you've wasted. You wasted. It's not so bad with DAS because you get as many as you can in, in a day. And, but like, it's just such a waste. Such a waste. I can't believe you would ever. Anyway, that's all uh, for the Disney uh, DAS Pass for Disney World. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. And stay tuned for the next episode of the podcast. Thank you.